we need to talk about the negative. The negative here has to do with the direction. The direction of the induced current and the induced EMF is called Lenz's law. Believe it or not, there are two different guys attributed to this, one for the, the um, equation itself and one for the direction, Lenz's law. And it comes down to this negative. So the EMF, induced EMF equals the negative of the number of loops times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. This negative indicates that the induced EMF is opposite the direction of the change in the magnetic flux. I like to call the, the term that I, I like to use for this, which I've seen several times, is called electromagnetic inertia. It tries to resist the change in the magnetic field, and it literally induces a magnetic field to counteract that change in the magnetic field. And we're going to walk through several examples of this to make sure that you understand the direction. Class, what handy tool do you think we're going to use? The right hand, the left hand, right hand rule, Sarah. I didn't say that. Uh -huh. uh, sure. So here we go. <laughs> 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 We're just going to start with a loop. Initially, there is no current on this loop. Suddenly, we are going to increase so that there is a magnetic field inside the loop that looks like this. So initially, no magnetic field, no current in the loop. So initially, no magnetic field. Finally, we have a magnetic field. That magnetic field is into the board. And it is increasing. According to Lenz's law, the concept of electromagnetic inertia, our circuit, this loop, resists this change. So it creates, it induces a magnetic field that will resist this change. And therefore, the induced magnetic field will be out of the page. If the induced, induced magnetic field is out of the page, that is created by a current, an induced current, which is, if you use your right hand, the induced, <coughs> the induced magnetic field is out of the page, therefore the induced current is going to be counterclockwise. We walk through that again. No magnetic field suddenly magnetic field. That magnetic field that exists is into the board. So we're going from zero to something that's into the board. That means that that magnetic field is increasing. The induced magnetic field is going to be opposite the change in the magnetic field, which means it tries to counteract this, keep the magnetic field at zero where it was before. So the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite the direction of the magnetic field. So it's going to be out of the board. So then, in order to get an induced magnetic field caused by an induced current, that induced current needs to be in the counterclockwise direction. Let's do another. We're basically going to do the reverse here. Now, we start with a magnetic field that is into the board, and we're going to turn that magnetic field off. Please walk me through the direction of the induced current in the loop while we're turning off the magnetic field. Nick. So it pretty much wants to go back to where it was before. So the new magnetic field we go again. So. Okay, but let's back up. Start with what we have. The magnetic field is into the board, right? And what's happening to it? It's turned off. It's decreasing, right? So what then is the direction of the induced magnetic field into the board, right? Because it tries to keep what was there. The magnetic field was into the board, so the induced magnetic field is going to be into the board. 
if the induced magnetic field is into the board, the induced current then is in what direction? Clockwise. Because the induced magnetic field is into the board, therefore the clockwise, the, the uh, induced current is going to be clockwise. All right, let's do some more. Let's say we have a loop that looks like this with a magnetic field in it. So far, we've worked with number one. Now we're going to work with number two. This is the initial. The final is we're going to take the size of the loop and we're going to decrease the size of the loop so it's now much smaller. So this is our final position. Initially, we have a magnetic field that is into the page, and we're going to decrease the size of the loop. Okay. Um, Meg. Uh, let's see. The induced magnetic field will still be. Well, let's let's start with what we have. Oh, well, we have the initial uh, magnetic field. It's going into the board. Uh huh. And final is also going to be true. I agree with that. What's happening to the flux? flux? Magnetic flux. Remind me, what is magnetic flux? I know, BA cosine theta, sure. What yeah. is magnetic flux, John? The number of magnetic field lines going through. The number of magnetic field lines going through a plane in this particular case are loop. So what's happening to the number of field lines going through this loop? It's decreasing. Therefore, the magnetic field that is induced is in what direction? Because in order to keep the flux the same, the induced magnetic field is going to be into the board. Therefore, the direction of the induced current class is class clockwise, right? Because if the induced magnetic field is into the board, that is induced by a current that was going clockwise. All right, let's do more. So really, it always comes down to what's happening to the flux. Is the flux increasing or decreasing? And the flux tries to stay the same. All right, so initially it looks like this. Finally, it's going to look like this with the magnetic field now going into the page. I'm sorry, out of the board. Is that large on purpose? No, sorry, they're supposed to be the same size. I'll, I'll clearly mention it. It's supposed to be different. So walk me through this one. Um, Kathy. In other words, the magnetic flux is out and also increasing. Keep going. Uh, so your uh, magnetic field induced is going to be in the board. Okay. Into the board to counteract the increasing magnetic field. Uh, so then the current will be clockwise. Um, I agree. It will be clockwise. I should probably indicate that current here. So we have all right. Don't worry, there's more. What if we have initially our magnetic field looks like this, and our loop is oriented like this relative to that plane? In other words, it's oriented like this. And this is what it looks like initially. And finally, we're going to turn it such that it is now oriented like this. Now, magnetic field isn't changing. So how do we work with this one, flat? Well, initially there are no uh, lines going through it. 
initially the magnetic flux is equal to zero because there are no magnetic field lines going through. True. Keep going with that. Um, then finally you're going to have an area of the circle, so you are going to have your uh, magnetic flux increasing. It's increasing in what direction? Uh, in the out of the board direction. Out of the board. So now, what is the direction of the induced magnetic field? Uh, keep going, Clay. Uh, into the board. Again, to counteract the increasing flux, which is out of the board, it's going to be into the board and let the direction of the induced current then. Uh, it's going to be clockwise. It's going to be clockwise again. If the induced magnetic field is into the board, the current is going to be clockwise. Lastly, let's say we start out with a magnetic field that is oriented 90 degrees to our loop. Oh, one, actually, let's do this first. Does it matter which direction we turn the loop? Yeah. No. I, got, I heard both answers, so. No. no. Doesn't matter. We are going to get the current flowing this way. Regardless of which way I turn it, we're still going to have the magnetic flux is going to be increasing out of the board, and we will get an induced current that is clockwise when viewed from this position. So the direction we actually turn <coughs> is irrelevant. Uh, so here is our magnetic field, which is oriented vertically upward, and our loop is oriented like this. So initially it looks like this. And then finally, it's, we're going to turn the magnetic field so the magnetic field looks like this. What? is the direction. Walk me all the way through it, please. Um, Gary. I'm not really sure what's going on, but uh, <laughs> so initially it is up. What's up? The, the I agree, the direction of the magnetic field, but the direction of the magnetic field helps us to figure out the flux, which is really what matters. So what is the initial magnetic flux, Gary? That's really what matters. We need to talk about the initial magnetic flux. Loki, help us out. Initial magnetic flux? Um, zero. Zero. Why? Because the number of field lines are going to the point of zero. It's zero. If you look at BA cosine theta, the angle between the area vector, which is either out of the board or into the board, and the um, magnetic field is going to be 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is zero. OK, so the magnetic flux initially is actually zero. But then what happens to the magnetic flux? John? It increases. What direction? Um, in. Into the board. Therefore, we're going to have an induced magnetic field, which is what direction, Hamza? Um, out of the board. Out of the board. And therefore, Hamza, direction of the current. The induced current then, in order to be out of the board, I think I agree, is going to be counterclockwise. Good. So those are some examples of the concept of Lenz's law, which is the direction of the induced EMF or the induced current whenever the flux, magnetic flux, is changing. Mr. Bowler? Yep. How did we get out of the board? How did we get out of the board? Okay. So the First of all, the flux is zero initially. Finally, we have a flux which is increasing into the board, right? As we go from here to here, the flux is increasing into the board. Therefore, the magnetic field is induced, is out of the board. Again, this is the concept of electromagnetic inertia. It tries to resist the change. It tries to keep the flux at zero. But it was increasing there too and there. Right, here it was increasing out of the board. Oh, okay. Right? Here it's increasing into the board. Got it.